All right, so into the paired samples t-test. As I said before, this is really similar to the other two t-tests that we've talked about in that the paired samples t-test is also a signal to noise ratio. It's a ratio of how big the average difference is between the two scores on the numerator in proportion to how much variation there is around that mean difference as the denominator. So the signal is the difference between the two scores. The noise here is the variation, the variability around that mean difference. And we have a nice T formula here, which looks pretty similar to our other T formulas. But here you can see that we've got X bar diff, and that's the different scores, the average different score between the two scores, divided by the standard error of the difference. And the standard error of the difference, we can calculate just by looking at the standard deviation of the difference, dividing by the square root of the sample size, just like any other standard error calculation that we've previously talked about. And something that I just want to make a quick note about here, but I won't labour the point, is that this paired samples t-test is actually the exact same thing as if we were conducting a one sample t-test on those different scores and testing the average different scores against a value of zero. So it's actually the formula is exactly the same and the process is exactly the same if we were conducting the paired samples t-test versus if we were conducting a one sample t-test on the different scores, comparing it to a score of zero. So the process is, is exactly the same. That's because what we're looking at in the paired samples t-test is specifically the difference between the two scores, the score under condition one versus condition two. It's exactly the same thing. So to actually calculate the t-test using this particular example, then we just need to find um, the actual numbers to plug into that formula. So our x bar difference, our mean difference score, is just the average score for group two or for uh, sort of sample two um, minus the average score for group one or sample one, which here we can just take as the mean um, proportion of gaze under the test condition, which is 0.593, minus the mean proportion of gaze under the baseline condition, 0.521. And I just got those from the descriptive st stats table a few slides ago. Note that, like I said last week for the independent samples t-test, which group is gr or which condition is group two, which condition is condition two versus which condition is condition one actually doesn't make any difference in terms of the calculation itself. If I were to swap these two around, I'd end up with the exact same t statistic just with a different sign on it, so either a positive t or a negative t. The convention says if you're looking at two different time points, so time one to time two, you usually do time two minus time one, but that's just convention. There's no actual mathematical reason for doing it that way. It doesn't actually make any difference to the t-test itself. Okay, so our mean score two minus mean score one gives us a different average difference score of 0.072, approximately, due to rounding error. Um, and that's the same as um, what we saw as the summary of the the different scores again a couple of slides ago. The standard error of the difference, the standard error of the mean difference, we can calculate as the standard deviation of the difference, which is 0.069, divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 32, and that gives us the standard error of the difference of 0 0.030. And then if we plug those formulas into our t-test formula, you can see over the side here, we end up with a t-statistic of 2.4. That's just going through the process of putting those numbers into the formula and calculating what the answer is. So we end up with a t-statistic of 2.4. Just like I said before, if our t-statistic, oh, like I said last week, if our t-statistic equals 1, it means that the numerator is exactly the same as the denominator. So the signal is equivalent in size, in magnitude, to the noise, to the variability. The bigger our t-statistic, the more signal there is in terms of the difference between scores in proportion to the amount of variability around that difference and therefore the bigger the effect in very, very simple terms. And remember that the process of doing null hypothesis significance testing, which is what we're doing when we get a p-value that corresponds with our test statistic, is to see how likely it is, what the probability is, that we've obtained this particular t-statistic if the null hypothesis of no difference between the two conditions is true, if the null hypothesis of no difference, of no effect, is true. So the smaller our p-value, 
the less likely it is that we've obtained this T statistic if the null hypothesis is true. And therefore, the more likely it is that we're picking up on a real effect that exists in our population. So we know that we need degrees of freedom to correspond with our actual test statistic. And the degrees of freedom for the paired samples t-test is the sample size minus 1. So here, 32 minus 1 gives us 31 degrees of freedom. So our obtained t-statistic for this particular example was 2.4. If we wanted to see if that's a significant result in that if it's, we would need to compare it to our critical t-statistic, and that critical t-statistic we can get from looking up a t-table, a table of critical t-values. Remember that we're doing a two-tailed test of significance, as we always will be doing throughout this course. We've got a critical alpha, our cutoff for significance, at a value of 0.05 and we have 31 degrees of freedom. So the critical T value that corresponds to that is a T of 2.0395, 2.04 we can round it to. So what we need to do is to compare our obtained T, the T that we actually got from our data, to that critical T. And in this instance, we can see that our obtained T of 2.4 is bigger than the critical T of 2.04. And that means that we can reject our null hypothesis, just like this very clever cat on the side is telling us that we can do, because we've got a significant difference between the groups. We've got a significant difference in scores from time one to time two. So the mean difference score is significantly different to zero. There's a significant difference between the two sets of scores. That's what this significant result is telling us. If we wanted to do the same thing but using STATA, and we will be doing that because that's a necessary thing to do, that's a useful thing for us to do, um, then that's what the next couple of slides are going over. So again, this is our data that we can look at in STATA. Those are the two variables that we're using up in our paired samples t-test. So if we want to use the menu system, then we go firstly through the statistics menu, summaries, tables and tests, down to classical tests of hypotheses, and then across to t-test. This is the same place that the t-tests were located last week when we did both the one sample and the independent samples t-tests. We get this menu that comes up and we just need to select the paired t-test because that's what we're doing. And then to select our two variables here, the first variable and the second variable. Again, which variable goes into first versus second makes no difference. It's just going to affect the sign on the t-statistic, but it meaningfully makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, if we want to do the same thing by using the written out command, the syntax, then it's relatively straightforward. It's just the t-test command, which again is the same as what we were using last week. t-test one variable equals second variable. And that will give us, either that or using the menu system, will give us this output down the bottom here. And you can see it looks really similar to our independent samples t-test last week, because again, it's a very, very similar thing that it's doing, very similar kind of test. So important things to pull out of this output. You can see that status summarizes the different scores for us. Um, we're not requesting that it summarize the variable, that different score variable. It just gives us the overall different scores as a part of the t-test um, process, the t-test output. And you can see that the descriptives for that um, row there, that different score row, that's exactly the same as what we saw as the summary of the numeric, the numeric summary statistics for the different score that we calculated back earlier in this lecture. So back on slide 14. The only difference here is that this is a negative difference just because the, the order of which variable was subtracted from the other variable is the other way around, just like I was saying before. You can see the T statistic um, actually value itself, that negative 2.4164, just the same as what we calculated ourselves, um, except this is a negative value, again, because the order of which variable was subtracted from which is just opposite to what we were doing, um, but also with 31 degrees of freedom. And we know that static gives us three different kinds of p-values here. The only one that you need to worry about for the entirety of this course is the one in the middle. It's always going to be the one in the middle. And this is the p-value that corresponds with our non-directional alternate hypothesis. So this is the one in the middle for us. The um, alternate hypothesis is listed as the first row and the second row is the actual p-value itself. And the p-value is 0 0.0218. Because that value is less than 0.05, which remember is our critical alpha, that's our cutoff for significance, then we can conclude that we've got a significant result here. 
So we've got a statistically significant result, just like Ryan Gosling is confirming with us on the side there. So what this is telling us is that under the baseline condition, the baseline test condition, there's a significant difference between the proportion of uh, time that the infants spend gazing between the two adults, between the baseline and the test condition. And specifically, if we go back to those descriptives there, we can see that the infants spend significantly longer gazing at the adult who is singing the familiar song compared to the unfamiliar song under the test condition versus the baseline condition. Just to bring them up again.